Good evening. My name is Joseph Soto Perez. I am from the University of Connecticut Physiology and Neurobiology Department. And today I'll be talking to you about my project titled Potential Roles of KCNQ2 in Respiratory Homeostasis. In general, my project centers around understanding how KCNQ2 channels regulate control of breathing. And to do this, my project consists of two principal aims. The first one being understanding how KCNQ2 channels control the cellular excitability of populations in the respiratory circuit. And the second being understanding how KCNQ2 channels contribute to respiratory behavior at the whole animal level. Now, my hypothesis is that the respiratory control circuit, in particular chemoreceptors, are uniquely sensitive to KCNQ2 channel activity. This work is clinically relevant given that mutations in KCNQ2 have been associated with epileptic encephalopathies. Now, principal elements of the respiratory control are located in the medullary portion of the brainstem. Here we have the inspiratory rhythm generator, the pre botzinger complex. We also have the expiratory rhythm generator, which would be the parafacial respiratory group. Additionally, we have central chemoreceptors whose function it is to detect fluctuations in CO2 and hydrogen ion levels and regulate respiratory drive as a means of maintaining the pH within a narrow homeostatic range. These central chemoreceptors are the nucleus of the solitary tract, the NTS, the medullary raphe, and the retrotrapezoid nucleus, the RTN. So KCNQ2 channels themselves are voltage-gated potassium channels that are open at submembrane threshold potentials. These channels are important in regulating the resting membrane potential and the firing behavior of neurons. These channels can function as homotetramers and they can also assemble as heterotetramers with KCNQ3. They are underlie the M current and the medium after hyperpolarization. And in terms of their subcellular localization, they are highly enriched in the axon initial segments. Now, evidence that KCNQ2 channels modulate respiratory homeostasis comes from Dr. Sarah Monkey, who identified a recurrent KCNQ2 gain of function variant, the R201C variant, which manifests in a clinical profile with chronic hypoventilation. Interestingly, the mechanism by which KCNQ2 gain of function variants leads to this hypoventilatory phenotype is completely unknown. Now, in order to understand how this variant manifests in this manner, Dr. Anastasios Jigunis developed a mouse model which contains the mutated exon 4 in an intronic sequence which is silenced by being in an inverse orientation. This mouse model has double flox inverse oriented lox P sites and it is a flip excision system in which in the presence of Cre recombinase, we get a flipping event which activates the mutation and then an excision event which takes away the wild type exon. Using this mouse model, we could cross it with cell type specific Cre expressing lines to generate uh, cell type specific crosses. Um, we could do this, for example, with the FOX2B Cree line, which would allow us to express this variant in the RTN. Similarly, we could use the DBX1 Cree, which would allow us to express the mutation in the pre boxinger complex. Now, once generated, these cell type specific crosses, we 
can use them to perform slice patch electrophysiology in which we would study electrophysiological properties such as the resting membrane potential, the input resistance, rio base, and medium after hyperpolarization, and even repetitive firing behaviors. Given that this is a gain of function mutation in a potassium channel, one would expect that the cellular excitability of these populations would be decreased. Um, however, it is also possible that KCNQ2 differentially influences the activity of populations in a region-specific manner. Using the experimental approach in AIM-2, we could determine the contributions of these specific regions at the whole animal level. And the experimental paradigm we have set up for this particular AIM consists of taking an animal and measuring its breathing before expressing the mutation. And then through stereotaxic targeted in vivo injection of Cree-expressing adenoviral vectors, we can express the gain of function variant in a site-specific manner. Um, we can, for example, inject directly into the RTN, into the NTS, the PREBOC, the RAFE, and only affect that particular location without compromising any uh, of the other circuitry or with minimal risk of ectopic expression. Once we have expressed this mutation, we would allow a recovery period of two weeks, and then again, we would measure breathing in them through whole body plethysmography. This would allow us to compare before and after the mutation is expressed. Given that this mutation is modeled after a human mutation, <clears throat> it is likely, or we at least anticipate, that we will be able to recapitulate some of the clinical symptoms exhibited by patients who have this mutation. And it would be interesting if the expression of this variant affects in a region-specific manner different aspects of breathing, as it would help us understand which component of the respiratory circuit is most vulnerable to KCNQ2 dysfunction. Now, the work done performed in this project will allow us to identify the mechanisms by which KCNQ2 channels contribute to respiratory homeostasis in general, and it may also inform about other gene disorders which result in respiratory impairment. Additionally, it's possible that the results gained by these experiments would allow us to identify therapeutic targets for treatments of a wide array of respiratory disorders. Thank you for your time. If there are any questions, I would gladly like to answer them. Uh, have a wonderful day.